Okay, so it's actually mostly artists. So. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Um, okay. There was a. Oh yeah, hello, it's Zoom Zoom. He's hanging up right at Zoom Zoom. I kind of scribble and cry a lot and do a lot of drinking. Um, yeah. um, how do I start an animation? I wanted to write comic books and television and movies and stuff. And uh, you know, after college, I was entering all the screenwriting contests. And one of the screenwriting contests I won. Uh, it was a small one, but it was sponsored by uh, animation studio Klaski Chupo. And uh, so I, I took that contest win and I sent it out to a bunch of agents and managers and I got one person who was like, I, you know, your, hey, your samples actually look pretty good, we'll see what happens. And so I got a, a manager out of that and I was like, oh great, okay, I'm set, I'm a writer with a manager, you know, I'm a rep, it's all, it's all good. So two years later, <laughs> two years later of, you know, continuing to write, continuing to get, you know, not get anything done, you know, nor not nobody buying my stuff. But you know, meeting lots of people, networking, shaking lots of hands, saying, "Look, you know, I'm ready to, you know, I know you guys don't have a job, but if you have one, I'm ready to go when you need me." And uh, yeah, eventually, uh, my manager got introduced me to uh, the head writer on uh, Ninja Turtles, and he needed somebody who could jump in real quickly, and uh, that's how I got my start. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I've been doing it ever since. Wow, that's a lot of different stories. Um, this is our success story. This is our rising star here. We're yeah. going to be working for this guy soon. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually part of the thing. Is you know, you're, you're going to hear a lot of various different types of stories of how people break in. Because there's no one set way to break in. And that's what, kind of one of the infuriating kind of mysterious, mysterious things about the entertainment industry. So when you hear these stories, don't think, oh, i got to do exactly what he did or i got to do exactly what she did. Think of it as there are ways to get in. Everybody makes their own path. You know, I mean, it's kind of infuriating. If you want to become president of the United States, there's actually a better, more defined path as to what you want to do. Then I just want to work, you know, I want to make cartoons. It's a little more difficult. But yeah, hopefully these stories will help kind of demystify the things because it is possible. It's not easy, but it is possible. So don't don't feel like oh my god I got to do exactly like he did. It's totally easy. <laughs> but, the, but actually, actually the one thing you need is to be a fan, and I think everyone here has that because we were all fans of anime and animation and comic books and movies, and I think that's that's what gets you through the day. That's what makes you write the script, you know, whatever. Take the business meeting, put, draw the pictures, <laughs> put together the trailer and put it on YouTube. Like as long as you're a fan, I think you're already halfway there. Sorry, that's, that's, that's okay. Um, actually, um, this was actually my break into the American anime industry. Because um, actually, four years prior to that, I came down here on an internship to Bang Zoom Entertainment. And so that started my anime industry break in. And then so after that, what happened is I went from job to job. And then eventually, three years ago at Anime Expo, I met that guy down there. And so, wait, uh, me or him? Who, 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 me? Oh, yeah. Oh, hi. I've never met you before. I don't know. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi. That's right. And so, basically, what happened is, is that, um, what happened is, uh, Bang Zoom had fired me, and they needed another video production guy. <laughs> oh. And so, they hired this guy. And so, I could have taken the route of, oh, that bastard. He took my job. I still hate you. <laughs> but instead, I was like, well, it wasn't that much fun working for the company. I feel more sorry for it. So then, um, <laughs> so the funny thing after that was that um, we kept meeting at cons, like not really calling each other and like hooking up, but it was just like, I would, hey, 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 that's private. How long have you guys been hooking up? <laughs> So I'd meet him at, I'd meet him at, I'd meet him at Comic Con, I met him at, at the next Anime Expo, I met him at the Anime Expo after that. And after three Anime Expos, I was like, all right, screw this. He, I know he works in the industry, I know he worked, and, and at the time he was working at Warner Brothers on Thundercats. And so then, when we met at Anime Expo, he was like, dude, I've got this, this panel, Breaking into Animation. I was like, I gotta be there. And so I, I came to the, I came, I watched it, it was awesome. And then later I was like, dude, what's up? Come on now. And then a month later, he got me in. Yeah. So, so the moral of the story is, know that guy. You owe me your soul. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> Brienne? Um, uh, I, oh, sorry. 
Um, I I grew up in um, Washington State on the east side, which is like which is farmland. So um, I would just like find copies of like Aunt America at the grocery store. Like I I couldn't even get a book of comics <laughs> and like like pick up like the DC, like Disney feature design books for whatever movie came out. I think when I was in high school we found out about internet. Um, <laughs> but I've been wanting I've been wanting to be an animator and I wanted to be an animator since I was like three. Like seriously, like my, my next door neighbors brought over a beta max. I swear I think it was a beta max because it was chunky. <laughs> they uh, they played um, out they they showed me Alice in Wonderland. Disney's and like I was three years old and I'm like I love that I don't know understand what it is I don't understand why it's moving but it's so pretty and I want to do it. <laughs> so my my parents are really supportive um, I've I've been pretty asthmatic all my life so um, to keep me from having an asthma attack because I'm also really hyper to make me sit down they would give me paper and a pencil and they're like just sit just sit so it was really encouraged in my family to draw. And my, my parents are farmers, and it's it's a hard business, which is funny because animation is kind of the same way. It's like, you know, one minute you're doing really well, and next minute it's like, oh, there's no work, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they were very supportive. And when I was in junior high, in high school, they um, my art teacher found out about a program called CESA. How many people in here have been to CESA or are thinking about attending? Yay! Three, four, five. Good job, guys. I really, really love that program. Um, they were called InterSpark for a while also. They were CESA and they were InterSpark. It's California State Summer School for the Arts. It's probably too late this year to apply, but it's usually during July. It's a whole month, and it's basically they give you animation assignments. There's people working. They take you through studios. They have guest speakers. It's, it, it was really good. Like When I was there, it was Christine Knuska with Hayes, Queen Cole, and Gray Schwartz. Um, I'm not sure who's in charge of it now, but I heard it's still good. And um, yeah, so I went there, and I did two years of CESA during the summer. And um, they, I wasn't sure what to do after CESA. And I was thinking about applying for a term animation. And Christine Knuska actually set me aside with me to apply for character at CalArts. And I'm just gonna say at the moment, you don't need to go to CalArts to be an animation. You can go anywhere. You don't necessarily have to go to college. You need to work your ass off regardless. Um, so I went to CalArts for four years. I animated, I did everything I could, and I was aware that the animation feature industry was dying while I was in school. Because we had teachers coming in and telling us to give up. Which was really sad. Like teachers losing their homes or going to divorces on top of everything else. So it was really depressing. And when I graduated, I was one of the few, two people went to Pixar, and the rest of us went to a company called Paradox out in War Park, which is a uh, third party video game company. And I'm going to say this now if you are ever working somewhere where someone is yelling at you or screaming at you or telling you to work weekends or work during the week and not, you don't get paid, it's okay to leave. Like, I, I was really afraid that I was going to get like, blacklisted or something for not doing these things. I was young and out of school. And, all my friends were having trouble finding work. So um, they ended up laying us off anyway. <laughs> and then I spent another year trying to find work. Um, I was able to get a grant from a company called Regional, Regional Maple Leaf up in Canada. And I just found out this year that I think they disbanded. Um, yeah, I would, I would suggest Googling it and checking it just to see if maybe they're still gonna do something. But they got me a grant, so I was able to stay down here for another year. I had an illustrated book for them. And I was having a hard time finding work. And then one of my friends had started a forum called Motion Zoo. And they were posting, whenever they found out about jobs, they'd post it. And somebody posted that they were looking for designer for Teen Titans. And um, so I applied right away. And Whoa. I lucked out and got the job. Yeah, ah, thank oh, you. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll keep talking. Bill or <laughs> no, we all pay oh, to come no, in here. No, <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs>